probably most difficult aspects of an Ironman distance race is how hard it is to stay focused for eight hours. So you can be out there a long time. It all comes down to staying in the moment. Five years ago, I would have said the brain is very much an untapped frontier in the science of performance. Now, not so much. One of the big limiting factors is getting the most you can out of the time you have to train. This is a technology that lets you get more out of that limited time. I've always been focusing on training the body. It wasn't until I got older and smarter that I realized, well, it really starts with training your brain. As professional athletes' careers span years, sometimes decades, they need to constantly reinvent themselves to stay ahead of the competition. Tiger Woods changed the swing over time, Serena Williams perfected her power with precision, and Michael Phelps focused on his mental game. Those adjustments can take a long time to perfect. But what if new brain zapping technology could significantly reduce that time and help aging athletes change their game faster? This technology is called transcranial direct current stimulation, or TDCS. Basically, it's a small electrical current that can be applied to the brain, specifically the motor cortex, the part of the brain that controls movement. We get better at really any skill by repetition. And that happens by changing the brain and forming new pathways for that new skill. The scientific term for this process is called neuroplasticity. And sending TDCS to the brain is said to speed up that process. Typically, this was done in the lab with wires and electrodes. But Halo Neuroscience is one of the first companies to offer TDCS as a consumer product. Halo Neuroscience is a human performance company, and we make brain stimulators, wearable products that help people get better at sports, music, anything where they live and die by movement. Brett says by wearing their headset for just 20 minutes before you learn something new, you'll have a window of up to 60 minutes of increased neuroplasticity, a time when your brain can learn repetition better and faster. For athletes like Tim O'Donnell, that translates into improving and refining their form, and thus changing their game more quickly with the headset than without it. Tim is one of the world's top triathletes. He just got second in last year's Ironman World Championship and set a record for the fastest race by an American man. He partners with Halo Neuroscience and wears their headset nearly every day of his training. I can control all the variables, I can focus on my power or my cadence, and I can really just do the work. I think Tim has really helped advance our understanding of how, how this is relevant to endurance sports. Your whole success depends on being able to keep your act together, keep your form in the face of more and more fatigue. And if you can do that, you're gonna succeed. The concept is elegant, and there are plenty of anecdotal examples suggesting it works. But what does the science say? Well, the jury's still out. Transcranial direct current stimulation. It's remarkably simple. I'm not suggesting it, but you could do it at home with a 9-volt battery, two wires, and two electrodes. This is Alex Hutchinson, a science and technology journalist writing mostly about endurance sports. The origins of the technology go back, in some ways, thousands of years. People were putting, you know, electric torpedo fish on their heads to cure headaches 2,000 years ago. The modern version of the technology was developed sometime in the late 1990s. It's really hard to do good research in these areas. Well, how do you measure if someone got half a percent better? I'm only aware of two studies that, that use the HALO device. They're both very small studies. It's hard to draw airtight conclusions from them. But the broader question is whether the technology works consistently and repeatably for the majority of people. Sending an electrical current to your brain sounds dangerous, but several studies suggest it could help treat depression, anxiety, Parkinson's disease, and even chronic pain. And while it's not approved by the FDA, it's generally accepted as safe. However, there is minimal research on the long-term effects of TDCS, but the concept has been used in different forms for years, with no evidence of damage to the brain. The, the strength of the electrical field in this technology, it's not too different from the electrical fields that your brain generates in the first place. You're not standing under a power line. This is, it's, it, it's kind of the language of the brain. Tim is confident this tech has helped him continue to improve as he's aged. 
This year I had my strongest Ironman World Championship ever, and I was the first American to ever break the eight hour barrier in Hawaii. It's pretty insane to think about the fact that I'm 39, I've been racing this race forever, and I just have my best performance. So here I am, later stages of my career, and I'm still getting better, and it's, it's awesome. <laughs> But as more and more tech-enabled performance enhancers come to market, it will inevitably force leagues, coaches, and players to answer the question of how to maintain a level playing field. The role of technology in sport is a conversation that we have to have because I think it's a really kind of profound question for all of us to try and understand what the nature of our limits are. We can move towards the sort of the glory of the cyborg athlete, or we can take the sort of traditionalist route. I got into this sport not to win races, but to find the best version of me and to challenge myself on, in so many different ways, you know, not just physically, but emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And I still feel I haven't completed that journey. I think there's more challenges out there and I think there's better results out there. And I'm not gonna let my age stop me from doing that. Thanks for watching our series, The Edge. If you wanna find out more about how technology is changing the game, go to our website and subscribe to Freethink for more videos like this one every week.